So the question is, what do we mean by deep decarbonization? Today's energy economy around the world is powered by the combustion of some sort of fossil fuel, and the combustion products are ejected into the atmosphere, principally water vapor and carbon dioxide. And the CO2, is, as we all know, is a, is a climate change forcing gas. So that's the current demand side. If you meet that demand by burning carbon uh, in one form or another, then that will take us to unacceptable levels of climate change. And so squaring that, that uh, circle uh, is, is the, the challenge that we face. We have to meet the demands of humanity to meet the energy demands of nine or 10 billion human beings in a way that doesn't emit carbon at a rate that's unacceptable. I think there are two things that are interesting about what we're doing at UC San Diego. One is that we've got some of the world's leading experts on the technical side of deep decarbonization now working with, and they're going to learn how to work with over time, social scientists. And so that's really important. The other thing that's really interesting is that we have phenomenal atmospheric science, kind of fundamental science around the climate problem. And so some of the big questions around deep decarbonization relate to when do we know that it's actually happening? Can you measure that? I could see us um, building a new kind of model that allow us to understand not just how technically you decarbonize, but also the social and political constraints and opportunities in that, so that we can we have then have a suite of models that allow us to be much more accurate in predicting where and how different technologies will deploy, will scale, and, and then also much better advice to policymakers about where where do the interventions really change things. You know, I, I think it's interesting that most of the models in this area are purely technical models and that's that they play a role, but if we're going to actually change the world, we need a different kind of model. And so the question I have as an engineer, as a, a person working in technology is, um, how do we drive the costs of low carbon or zero carbon energy technologies down to the point where they become competitive with or perhaps even cheaper than uh, the competitors, the fossil fuels. And uh, that is one of the challenges in front of the engineers. And the question for policy folks, for economics folks is, uh, what are those costs? And where are the policy knobs that can be turned to try to enhance or, or speed that transition? Yeah, I, I think from a, from a policy analyst point of view, to me what's interesting is to learn from a team of scholars, it really can only be done as a team, what actually makes a difference. There's clearly a recognition that the world economy needs to move towards zero carbon energy sources. I don't think there's any debate about that. But I think what uh, is missing and what the initiative can help uh, bring, to, uh, bring to the fore is the scale of the challenge. World energy demand is going to double or triple over the lifetime of today's children, today's students. Uh, and that's entirely the legitimate increase in demand, mostly in the regions of the world that are the poorest regions of the world. That's where the energy growth is going to occur. But at the same time, if we meet that demand with the way that we've done it to date, then it's a disaster for carbon emissions. And so we've, we've got to meet that energy demand uh, and then at the same time drive towards uh, ultimately zero carbon energy sources. And getting businesses, getting governments, getting the population to really grapple with the scope and scale of the transition that's required is one of the things I think that this initiative can help with. Yeah, and I think, I think it's exactly right. And, and I, th I think one of the things that's tricky is that folks often say the problem is so urgent, which it is, that all we need to do is get political will to do something about that problem. And I think when you look closely, where political will plays some role in this, but what's really needed is work from the analyst community about how you connect constellations of political interests with, with different kinds of technologies that actually make a difference. And I think it's gonna, that is even harder in the emerging economies because most of them are not putting climate change at the top of the list of priorities. They're worried to some degree, but worried about lots of other things. And so you've got to find a way to, to get countries to change their energy policies and behavior that lines up with their, with their national interests.